373, if you'd like to wish to look on your, your hymnal this evening, page 373, you may have the joy bells ringing your heart. see you here. Isn't it a blessing uh, to be able to be excited about the things of God? You think about that song. What are we excited about? I hope you're excited about being here tonight as we get to hear the preaching of God's word uh, once again. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your goodness and for the, just the gift and the freedom that you, we have to come into this place and to worship you fr freely. And Lord, I pray that you would just once again work in our lives Lord, help us not to just be hearers of your word. Help us to be doers of it and not deceive in our own selves. Lord, I pray that you'd be with our pastor and fill him with your Holy Spirit. Hide him behind the cross and help us uh, as we listen to what you have to say from your word, Lord. I pray that you would help us to be open and honest and willing to take that next step in our life, whatever that may be. Lord, thank you for the music already that's been a blessing to our soul and our lives. And Lord, continue to bless our service. We just want to tell you we love you. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated at this time. This time the choir is going to come and sing a song entitled, That All May Hear.
page number 455 this evening. In my heart, there rings a melody of love. we prepare for our offering tonight, let me say thank you to all who participated in our Pack a Pew Sunday. If you were here, thank you for being here. If you brought visitors with us, we had a good number of visitors, especially in our 11 o'clock service today, a lot of adult visitors. So thank you for the effort for that. Our winner in our contest was Melissa Kennedy. She had four visitors with her today, so congratulations to her. And next Sunday is Extend Your Reach Sunday, and that is uh, an emphasis on bring someone, maybe an acquaintance you don't know very well, someone maybe you're going to meet this week that you could invite to come into God's house. So I hope you'll uh, be a part of that, bring some people in to hear the message of salvation. A couple of announcements for you. The Mommy's Time to Share, that's going to be this Tuesday, October the 8th. The time for that is from 9.30 to 11. I think maybe the bulletin had it to 12, but that, that for, is from 9.30 to 11. So make note of that if you would. For those who are interested in our trip, go into Honduras, February 21 through March 1st. We do have a meeting right after the service over in the men's prayer room. So if you're interested in that, I know we've had, I think, around 18 that have marked that they are interested in that. But if you have not marked that, but you say, boy, I'd still like to hear about that, uh, just come over to the meeting tonight uh, right after the service in the men's prayer room. Again, that's not a commitment to go. It's just uh, looking for some more information about it. Another thing that we've asked for a little bit of help with is we need three or four families to help us host missionary families while they're here uh, the 16th through the 20th. There are some that are going to get here Tuesday, stay through maybe Monday of the next week. Some are going to get here Tuesday and stay through Wednesday. And there's different times each of them are going to be here. So if you are interested in help with that, if you would let us know, we'd appreciate it. Let me give you this prayer request that was turned in this morning. Pray for Mark Wicker. His next MRI is on the 22nd of October at Cleveland Clinic. And please pray that the tumor has not grown or the cancer has not spread. So if you pray for Mark Wicker and that MRI on the 22nd of October, we'd appreciate it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, and we thank you, Lord, for your blessings of this day, Lord. Thank you for the visitors who came into your house today, Lord, and heard from your word. And I pray, Lord, that the seed sown will produce fruit, Lord. And we thank you for the promise that you give us that it will. I pray that you will meet with us tonight, Lord. I pray that you would bless this offering be with uh, Mark Wicker as he goes in for that MRI on the 22nd, Lord. I pray that he gets some good news uh, when, he, when that's done. And we pray you'd bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
evening we have uh, Mike and Ashley Hines to come and play and sing for us, Stand Still. Ashley's going to sing tonight is her mother's favorite song, and uh, her mom has sang it with me before, so she should be the one up here. She's sitting right over here, so after the church service, you guys need to go over there and say something to her about that. <clears throat> when we get all wrapped up in the things that go wrong in life, we need to be reminded that God's in control, and Psalm 46 is a... Uh, an exciting chapter to read. It talks about how great God is and how powerful he is and all the wonderful things that he can do. And then you get down to, it describes him, you get down to verse 10 and God speaks. Your father has a plan, though it's hard to see it now. You fear you're walking all alone, but he is there no doubt. When the storm around you rages And you're tossed to and fro When you're faced with life's decisions Not sure which way to go Stand still and let God move Standing still is hard to do And be secure, God is moving right now. Stand still and let God move. Standing still is hard to do. When you feel you have reached the end, He'll make a way for you. Stand still. Everyone stand once again this evening as we sing our closing congregational number, page 457. In my heart, there, Melody.
you so much. Just before Pastor comes this evening, we have Miranda Young to come sing for us The Refiner's Fire. Psalm 23, Psalm 23, thank you, Miranda, what a beautiful song, and uh, orchestra tonight, and the orchestra sounded good tonight, I thought especially in that, uh, what was the song, You May Have the Joy Bells, the orchestra sounded great in that, so appreciate your work on that, if you have the visual awareness that your pastor often has, you may have missed the fact that we've started pew reupholstery. I don't know if you've seen that or not, but it has begun. And uh, we are taking orders for those of you who have a special seat, if you need the massage chair or the <laughs> recliner. We've already got a few of those requests. And those are great. Just throw in an extra $10,000 bill in the offering plate. We'll see if we can get that set up for you. 
we uh, are hoping to have this done here in the next uh, two, two and a half weeks. And yeah, a lot of things go on in this facility to, to keep it from getting done. But uh, it's kind of neat. Our Around the World program is going on here. And so uh, Mrs. Ristler's in charge of that, and she's bringing the kids in. These guys are working in here. And I don't know their church background, but I do know this. They're learning a lot about the Lord here in the next few days. And I already told them that we'll have outfits for them. They can join our Around the World program and uh, sing along with us if they would like, because I know they'll know the songs well uh, by the time we get done. But uh, we're looking forward to seeing what the auditorium's going to look like. Then we get the uh, carpet going, and uh, we, we'd like to get that done before the men's conference, but uh, unless the Lord intervenes, that may not get done in time because of the, uh, the ordering and such. But uh, pray about that if you would. Psalm 23 the Bible says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. <clears throat> he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If I counted right, I think we're on our 10th week studying this. We've just been walking slowly through this. We've got tonight... And then next Sunday night, we should conclude Psalm 23. The portion that we're looking at tonight is just four simple words. And that's at the end of verse 5 where it says, My cup runneth over. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the music tonight, Lord. What a song. I choose the refiner's fire. Lord, so that you could be glorified. Lord, I pray that we could sing that song and live that song and appreciate the fire that you put us through, Lord, so that we could come out on the other side more valuable in your eyes. Lord, I pray tonight as we look at four simple words here that you would speak through me tonight, Lord. I pray the message would be exactly what you would desire it to be, well, thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We've probably all seen <clears throat> this situation. It's a teenage girl. She's maybe against a wall weeping. And you go up to the teenage girl and you say, You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You say, well, Is there anything I can do for you? No, I'll be fine. Well, what happened? Well, my boyfriend, he broke up with me. And she's just beside herself, you know, the world's going to end. And you say, well, are, are you okay? And she says, yeah, I'm fine. Now, what we guys would want to say is, all right, see you later. She says she's fine. But everything we see tells us the opposite, right? Are we able to say, my cup runneth over? But when we say it, do others look at us and say, I hear you, but I don't see you. I hear you saying that your cup's running over, but your behavior betrays those words. And then I think we need to ask ourselves this question. Is it possible to truly be able to say, my cup runneth over? And then when somebody looks at my life, say, he's not kidding. His cup does run over. Are we able to say something like this, maybe? My bank account may be low. My clothes may be less than royal. My house may be dilapidated. My car may be running on fumes. My body may be failing. My friends may be abandoning. My cup 
runneth over. We sang this song here just a few minutes ago, In My Heart. In my heart a melody is ringing with a joy that never will depart. And an angel's song could not be sweeter than the song that's ringing in my heart. And we sang it. But when others look at our lives, they say, that's, that's that person. That's exactly what I see. That person sings about a song ringing in the heart, and then I watch them, and it looks like there's a song ringing in the heart. Or do others look at us and say, I, I hear you, but your behavior betrays your words. Let me show you two ways that we can get ourselves in trouble. Take your Bible if you would. If we're going to be able to say, my cup runneth over, there's two things we better avoid. James chapter 4, James chapter 4, right after Hebrews. The Bible says this in the first verse of James 4. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. One thing we're going to have to get rid of in our lives is lust. Lust causes us to fight. Lust causes us to war. Lust causes us to kill. Lust will get in the way of being able to say, my cup runneth over. Let me give you a second in Proverbs 14. In Proverbs chapter 14, we'll see another one. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 30, we read this. Proverbs 14, 30 says, a sound heart is the life of the flesh. Proverbs 14, 30, the second half of that verse says, but envy the rottenness of the bones. Envy the rottenness of the bones. You know as well as I do that our bones are amazing. The bones that we have in our body are amazing. If it were not for our bones, what would we look like? We would be just a little pile right here, wouldn't we? Of varying sizes. But it's our bones. Our bones, they're alive. They're strong. We don't want our bones to be brittle, do we? I remember when my son broke his arm, we went to the doctor's office, and we got in the doctor's office, and we waited. And while we were waiting, I was reading things on the wall. And on the wall, it told about a broken arm. And it said that when the arm breaks, the body sends some kind of a signal. And all of a sudden, everybody in the body runs there. All these blood cells run there. And they begin to work. And they begin to repair. And they actually can make that spot stronger than it was. Just a couple weeks ago now, my son broke his collarbone. And we went and, and we, we got it checked out. Yep, that's a broken collarbone. And so then we went to the doctor four days later. And he goes, get that uh, sling off. You don't need to be wearing a sling. Here, let me show you. And he starts picking the arm up. I said, be careful. He just broke his collarbone. And he goes, three weeks from now. He showed it. It was like this. He says, three weeks from now, you'll think it's okay. Six weeks from now, it'll be fine. No problem. But the Bible says that when we let envy get in our lives, it is the rottenness of the bones. F.B. Meyer made this statement. He says, whatever the blessing is in our cup, it is sure to run over. With him, the calf is always the fatted calf. The robe is always the best robe. The joy is unspeakable. The peace passeth understanding. There is no grudging in God's benevolence. He does not measure out his goodness as a pharmacist counts his drops and measures his units slowly and exactly, drop by drop. God's way is always characterized by multitudinous and overflowing bounty. Is that your God? Is that a description of God in your life? My cup runneth over lust, 
envy can hurt that, can heed that, or can impede that. If focusing on our diminishing items leads to envy, what would happen if we focused on the unending items? If awareness of what we don't have creates jealousy, is it possible that an awareness of our abundance will lead to contentment? You see, is it possible that we put our focus on things that we ought not? And that causes us not to be able to have a cup that runs over. I want to give you a quote from C.S. Lewis. It's simple, but man, is it good. Here's a quote from C.S. Lewis. He said this, don't let your happiness depend upon something you can lose. Don't let your happiness depend upon something you can lose. Here's, here's a, a, an approach that we take. I want to gain possessions. Gaining possessions may become our obsession. Oh, I want to gain possessions. I'm just trying to gain some possessions. That's how I'm obsessed. The Bible says a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. We say, I just want to climb the status ladder. That's my dream. Luke 14, 11 says, he that exalted himself shall be abased. The other day, because of my, my son's collarbone, I was in charge of the weed eating. Or actually, I was in charge of starting the weed eater so that he could then run it. I didn't want him yanking on it. So I went out and I start, tried to start the weed eater. And I pulled it about 10 times. He was standing nearby and I said, Abe, which way should that switch be? And he goes, the other way. <laughs> so I pushed it the other way and guess what happened? Started right up. That's not how we'll find a cup that runs over. Where, where's the switch on this thing? If I could just switch this, flip that switch, then I'll have a cup that runneth over. That's not what you're going to find. According to the scripture, it is a learned attribute. It is a learned attribute. The apostle Paul said it this way, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. What if we would become very aware of our abundance? What if, if in each of our lives we would be able to say, hey, I understand areas that I have abundance of, things that I cannot lose. Tonight, I'm going to do it quickly. I'm going to give you 10 truths to bank on. You ready for this? 10 truths to bank on. This might be something you want on the fly leaf of your Bible. This might be something every once in a while you need to say, hey, I got to turn to this. I got to check this out. I got to be reminded of this because it doesn't feel like my cup's running over right now. Number one. His grace is sufficient. The Bible says this, if you want to turn with me to these passages, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we read this. The Apostle Paul is writing in verse 7, he says, Lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. The apostle Paul said, I had some kind of a thorn in the flesh. We're not sure what it was. There was something that was bothering him, something in his flesh. Some say it was his eyesight. Some say other things about him. Something was bothering him. And he went to the Lord. He says, Lord, please take this away. Lord, take this away from me. Lord, take this away three times. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So Paul then says this, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. The apostle Paul recognized his grace is sufficient. Number two, his mercy is everlasting. Psalm 100, you'll find the second and the third one in Psalm 100. His mercy is everlasting. 
The psalmist says in Psalm 100, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. You know why I think sometimes we don't, we're not able to say my cup runneth over? Because we're thinking about something that we can't attain. We're thinking about something we can lose and we're not thinking about the everlasting mercy of our God. His mercy is everlasting. The third one is found right here in the fifth verse as well. And that is this, his truth endureth to all generations. Hey, are you thankful for that? Doesn't that make your cup run over? Lord, you gave me the truth, and it endures to all generations. My cup runneth over. Number four is found in 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, when we read this. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible number four is his word is incorruptible his word is incorruptible his word is incorruptible i want you to understand something tonight you want a cup that's running over you recognize that his word is incorruptible there are many churches today i would say this most churches today do not stand upon the truth that his word is incorruptible it's a sad state of affairs when churches no longer believe that his word is incorruptible. The word incorruptible means not capable of being corrupted. Too many churches today are saying this, well, we have a form of the word of God. We don't have the original. And back in the original, it was perfect. But now we have something that's got some errors in it. There are not very many now. And they're just in obscure places. But there are a few. Let me tell you something, my cup's not running over when somebody tells me that. But when I read the word of God, I recognize that we don't have an uncorrupted word. We have an incorruptible word. It's not capable of being corrupted. Why is that? Because God preserved it. Man did not. Just like God inspired it, God preserved it. His word is incorruptible. Isaiah 55 is number five. Isaiah 55, look what it says here. The 55th chapter of Isaiah in the 7th verse says this, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. His pardon is abundant. I don't know about you. That's something to be, get excited about. His pardon is abundant. John chapter 10 and verse 28, we find our sixth truth to bank upon. John chapter 10 and verse 28. Verse 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. Number six is his life is eternal. Do you understand what's happening when we begin to turn our focus to the things that we cannot lose? I, I hope you begin to look at those things and say, hey, hey, I think I got it pretty good. My bank account's not very good. My house isn't what I'm, my car's, fa my health's failing. My cup's running over. I've got grace. I've got mercy. I've got truth. I've got an incorruptible word. I've got an abundant part. I've got a life eternal. Romans chapter eight is number seven. Romans chapter eight, look at this one. Romans chapter 8, beginning in the 35th verse. You want to see someone who's getting exciting is the Apostle Paul when he's writing this. Watch how he writes Romans 8, 35. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Number seven, his love cannot be separated from us. My cup runneth over. Philippians chapter four. Philippians chapter four. Verse seven. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7 says it this way, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Number 8 is peace passeth understanding. Hebrews chapter 4, we find our ninth one. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, we're looking at 10 truths to bank on. Here's number 9. Verse 14 says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. His throne room always has an open door. His throne room always has an open door. You know, some kings don't want to hear when you have bad news. Some bosses are that way generally we're that way aren't we i mean don't bring me your bad news if you got good i'd love to hear it but i don't have time for the bad but you know what the lord says he says when you're in your darkest deepest struggles you come i want you to come i don't just want you to come i want you to come boldly to find grace to help in time of need first john chapter one is number 10. 1 John chapter 1. You might be able to quote this verse with me. 1 John 1, 9, speaking to Christians, says this, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Number 10, his forgiveness is ever faithful. His forgiveness is ever faithful. I don't know where you stand tonight or sit. I don't know where you are emotionally. I don't know where you are physically. I don't know where you are in uh, your relationships with others. I don't know. But I do know this. There's 10 truths that we can bank on. And when we do, I believe we can say, my cup runneth over. <clears throat> I went to, um, to a, a singing concert. It's been quite a while back now. And there were a number of groups there singing. And this older couple got up to sing. I don't know good singing from bad, to be honest with you. I can't tell the difference. But I'm pretty sure that they were getting up in age in their singing. And they probably had better voices once upon a time. I think they were in their 80s. But when they got done singing this one song, I turned to my wife and I said, that was worth coming for. These people were in their 80s, and I'm going to read for you the words of the song they, they sang. It was titled, Drinking from My Saucer. Drinking from My Saucer. I've never made a fortune, and it's probably too late now. But I don't worry about that much. I'm happy anyhow. And as I go along life's way, I'm reaping better than I sowed. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflowed. <laughs> Haven't got a lot of riches. And sometimes the going's tough. But I've got loving ones all around me, and that makes me rich enough. I thank God for his blessings. And the mercies he's bestowed, I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup 
has overflowed. I remember times when things went wrong. My faith wore somewhat thin, but all at once the dark clouds broke and the sun peeped through again. So, Lord, help me not to gripe about the tough rows I have hoed. I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflowed. If God gives me strength and courage when the way grows steep and rough, I'll not ask for other blessings. I'm already blessed enough. And may I never be too busy to help others bear their loads then I'll keep drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflowed. Hope you like that. But I got to hear it from a couple 80-year-olds singing it. How precious that was. And I listened to that and I said, how often is that me? And how often do I let other things keep me from having an overflowing cup tonight it may be that you say i want that i need that i i'll do whatever's necessary give me that let me give you the possibility of one prerequisite i think we find it in one word in the scripture and that's the word tears, tears. You see, when you take your Bible and you begin to look through your Bible over and over again, you're going to see that tears precede rejoicing. Ezra wept. Esther encouraged weeping. In Psalm 30 and verse 5, it says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Isaiah 65, 19 says, And I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the, vo nor the voice of crying. John chapter 20 and verse 11, Mary came to the sepulcher. She stood at the sepulcher weeping. Then she stooped down. Psalm 126 and verse 6 says, He that goeth forth and weepeth. Bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Luke 6, verse 21 says, Blessed are they that weep now, for they shall laugh. John 16, and verse 20 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. How long has it been? How long has it been since one of us wept? in repentance for our attitude. God, forgive me. Forgive me for letting the things of this world take precedent, and I'm not able to say my cup runneth over. How many times have I missed out on an opportunity to be the light I need to be at my work, at my uh, place of entertainment, wherever it may be? I've missed my chance because I let the things of this world those things I cannot keep, keep me from having a cup that runs over. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 30 and we'll close. 1 Samuel chapter 30. The writer of Psalm 23 is a guy named David. If you don't know much about David and his life, you may not know he faced some real difficulties in life. As a matter of fact, a number of the difficulties that he faced in life were self-inflicted. A lot like me, and maybe you. A lot of my difficulties in life that I face are self-inflicted. Because of my own stupidity, I cause myself harm. David was a lot like that. But I want you to notice something in verse 4 of 1 Samuel 30, the writer of Psalm 23 says this, Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Visualize that. I don't mean there was a couple tears that were shed. 
I was holding little uh, Cash Humble this morning in uh, Sunday school class, two-year-old Sunday school class. And he wanted his mommy and he wanted his daddy. And I was holding him, and all of a sudden, this big tear bang at me. I said, Cash, look. When David cried, it wasn't just one or two. He cried. He wept until there was no more power to weep. But then we see this at the end of verse 6. It says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You might be here on a Sunday evening at Mansfield Baptist Temple, and you're not able to say that the Lord is your God. Maybe there's never been a time where you've put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, accepted the gift of eternal life, turned to Christ, and know you're on your way to heaven. If that's you, that's where you start. Because after you do that, then you can say, the Lord is my God. You see the 23rd Psalm? He begins to write, he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he begins to write there, and it's as though he's getting more excited. He's getting more excited till where he just gets, my cup runneth over. But it all began with the Lord is my shepherd. Is it possible that you could be here tonight and you'd say, the Lord's not been my shepherd and I need to make him my shepherd tonight. I need to allow him to become my shepherd. I need to accept him as my shepherd. If that's you, why not trust Christ as your Savior today? It may be, though, that you're here and you say, I, I've trusted Christ as my Savior, but I know all too often that my cup's not running over. Can I challenge you about this? Don't, don't begin to look around for the this, this, uh, uh, switch to flip. You're not going to find it. But dig into the word and begin to find the things that you cannot lose in him. And let that be your focus so that we can be like the Apostle Paul who said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Let's stand for prayer.